It's 2025, so it's probably time that you learn how to make some PS1 game models in Blender so you can get the projects that you've wanted to create forever off the ground. This video is going to prove to you that literally anyone can make anything and you don't need to learn every single tool inside of Blender. It's going to be using simple techniques that anyone can learn, just a couple of hours of practice. But first, you need to know what you can make you crazy. Either go find some concept art online, I use Pinterest to find mine, or make a quick little sketch of what you want to create on a piece of paper. And this is the image that I'm using to make my model. Let's start a Blender. First thing we do is create a block house. And basically this stage is where you take your image and you try to make the simplest version of it. Break it down into the most simple shapes. Use just cubes, doesn't matter. In this stage, we kind of figure out if everything's kind of working together, if the proportions are good. This is also where you can change from the reference image if you kind of want to mess around. Okay, now we have that. Let's actually turn this into a model that we can use. So I'm just going to basically take the base cube that I've used and then start extruding it out using literally simple modeling tools to recreate kind of the shapes that I want in my final thing and also kind of match the proportions of all those other cubes. I basically just use like inset, extruding, edge loops and moving. That's going to be the main tools that I do in the stage. And then do your best to kind of match whatever curves and stuff you need. Remember, we do in PS1. You don't need to have like 5,000 vertices on each curve. Keep it simple. It's PS1. These tools I'm using are pretty simple. If you look along the left or the side of your screen, you'll see these modeling tools. We're only going to be using like three, four, maybe five of these. But if you want a full list of kind of some good modeling tools, check one of the links in the description, 10 modeling tools to make anything inside Blender. For example, these sides out of cube, I took the sides and beveled them and then beveled the front of it as well. Then I took it, extruded it back. I went and inserted the face because I kind of want like a little bit of a thinner bit. I extruded that out. I just had to go duplicate those like first vertices just so they'll be the same like width. And then I just had to merge those together. So you just select your vertices, press M to merge or select everything and go M and by distance. Then take it, extrude it, insert it, extrude it and fill the face with F. And there you go. You have that entire piece done. And that is one of the big pieces done. And remember, we're doing PS1, so you don't have to even go that far into detail. You can basically just use even the simplest shapes and then just do everything inside the textures. You don't have to learn all the modeling tools exactly when you start. You can build up your repertoire of modeling tools as you go along. When you start an art, try to make a simple model and then pick a model or like pick a concept art where you have a couple of sections that you just you don't know how to make, just like one or two. And then to make those, go and do a bunch of research, go look up online, go find forums, go find tutorials, then work on that project, find it, do your problem solving. And now you've learned a new tool. And when you're doing that, you're going to be learning the muscle memory of using that tool. You're going to be learning how it can be used, the different ways, the different ways you can mess up and all of that. Then in your next project, you might have a similar case. And then when you do it, you may be a little bit better. Maybe you still have to go look at the tutorial. Maybe you have to look it up again or check what you did, but you get more comfortable with it and you, you build up that muscle memory. It's this whole process that is how you learn stuff. And you can do it much quicker if you're intentional with whatever you pick to model and the projects that you work on. So pick ones that can challenge you, but also don't pick something that you have no idea how to make the entire thing because that's just going to slow you down and it's going to put a mental block saying that you can't model it which is going to only hurt your whole process. Now that you've got your model done, we can do the texturing. Now, the first thing we have to do before texturing is UV unwrapping, which is basically telling the software where to put the textures onside the model. So first thing you need to do is add, actually add in an image texture. And then usually I go for like 128 by 128 or 256 by 256. And you can also set it to a like color grid, which will basically help you a lot to be able to tell if your model's stretching or not. Now, when you add your image, make sure to change the image settings to closest, which will make it that it doesn't blur out the pixels. And then you can start adding the seams, which is basically like cutting into your mesh, like with a pair of scissors. So you can go control E mark seam and then work your way through and get your model flat, like laid out flat. So we can actually go texture it. Now for texturing, what I first do is go and pick my base color. So it's going to be the red that I have for my ship. And then basically you're going to paint the entire thing red just so we know everything we need to do. And then we can use the like mesh selection bits. So go to edit mode, select a bit of the mesh that you want to be a specific color. And then you can go in the top left and click on this little icon that will basically make sure that whatever you paint will only be within the selection that you made. Then you can use the paint bucket to basically just drop color where you need it to be. From here, I'm going to start detailing the entire model. What I basically do is have my base color and then I have a highlight and a shadow color. And it's going to be very useful throughout your whole working process. So each color you do, add a shadow, add a highlight, and you can start like contouring stuff. You can add more details in. You can add little shadows, highlights. Remember, it's PS1. They don't have lighting, so we can also kind of build in some shadows and lighting into our model. But yeah, basically, I just worked through the entire thing, just painting it like this. Maybe look at some references to see kind of how the style goes. You can see what I do. Basically, just work through it. Add some little highlights on the edges. Add some shadows in the corners. Now from there, to make it look even cooler, I went to found this website that can do some like PS1 filters and stuff. Basically, like add some dithering. 
Uh, I found the site, I'll leave a link to it below. But basically I'd use the like ordered eight by eight. I set the width or the actual size of the image to 256 by 256, because that's what I used. Um, and I think on the strength of that little ordered eight by eight, I set it quite low. It was basically like just one or two points above the, the lowest and it came out well. Though the color did change. So I might just drop it into like an image editor and use some HSL adjustments to, to fix it up. Okay, and now you have a finished model. And if you wanna make beautiful PS1 characters inside of Blender, click the first link in the description or just click this video right here. See you.